Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. In today's episode, I'm gonna go through some of the questions that I get on Instagram and Facebook. I've written down all of those questions here in my notebook and uh, we're gonna go through them one by one. Probably they're gonna be of interest to you as well. The first question that I've written down is, what are collocations in English? Can you provide some examples? Absolutely. Well, collocations are natural combinations of words in a language. As an example, when you get up in the morning, you make your bed. You don't create your bed or you don't manufacture your bed. Although make, create and manufacture might have similarities in meaning, they are not used interchangeably. You do some exercise, but you don't perform some exercise. You don't act some exercise. You know why? Because they are not collocations. They are not natural combinations. Air travel sounds familiar to our ears because it's a collocation, but air journey, air voyage, and air trip, not so much. You go to see a movie, but you don't observe a movie. You don't regard a movie. When you're starving, you order fast food. You don't order quick food, speedy food, or agile food. Some of these combinations are really funny when they are not collocations. The second question is, what are phrasal verbs in English. Can you give me some examples? Why not? Let's do that. So phrasal verbs are verbs plus preposition combinations. As an example, look up to someone doesn't mean physically looking up to someone. It means to admire or respect someone. Show up is to go to an event or place like you show up to a wedding. Turn down means to reject or decline an offer. Look into something doesn't mean physically looking into something. It means to examine something very carefully. Carry on means to continue something. All of these are examples of phrasal verbs in English. Well, this one is uh, more of a concern. I'm always afraid of making mistakes in my speaking. What should I do? Well, first of all, people are not going to judge you based on how you talk. It's the message that you send across that is more important. Focus on the message. The second thing is, if you don't make mistakes, how can you learn? Nobody ever learned anything without making mistakes. So don't worry about it. Like people judge you. It's all good. Don't worry about it. People judge you anyway. Now let's take a look at this question. Why is it difficult for me to understand native speakers of English? There could be a number of reasons. Well, the first reason could be you don't have a good vocabulary base. So when people are talking, probably you cannot understand those words. Another reason could be you are not familiar with the correct pronunciations of words. Like in your head, you know the words, but you have learned with the wrong pronunciation. So when you hear those words, your brain does not recognize them. This one is really interesting. Do I need to engage in real life conversations to learn the language properly? Well, I'd say yes and no. Yes, because if you engage in real life conversations, your knowledge changes from passive to active. And no, because it doesn't have to be real life. Sometimes you can recreate some situations. That's what teachers of English are doing in the classroom all the time. You can create that situation with your friend, with your partner, with anybody. So put yourself in different situations and just talk. This one is one of my favorites. Is accent important in real life? To be honest, people don't care that much about your accent. All they care about is your pronunciation. See if you can actually say the words clearly so you can send the message across. Well, it's not about sounding American, sounding British or any other variety. It's about making sure people can understand you and you can understand people. This is also a very interesting question. Some people suggest watching the news to improve English. What do you think? If you ask me, I would say, don't do it. The kind of language that appears in the news is very different from the one that you hear in real life. The news jargon is different. The intonation is different. It's not real. It's a bit exaggerated. And most importantly, the topics that you are exposed to when watching the news are not very appealing. It's like 20 people died in this incident, two cars crashed on a highway, like 
it's going to make you really depressed. So don't do it. Let's take a look at this one together. Are speaking and writing connected? Absolutely. Speaking and writing as two productive skills are definitely connected. Like when you're speaking in your head, sometimes you're writing things. And when you are writing in your head, you're actually reading them out loud. Before even putting the pen on the paper or before even typing those words, you're just speaking them in your head. The more you speak, the better you can write. And the more you write, the better you can speak. Well, I personally love this question. What's shadowing? And how can it improve my pronunciation? It's a long story, but I'm going to make it very short. Shadowing basically means listening to someone, preferably a native speaker of English, and trying to just move like a shadow after them by repeating the exact same words that you hear. Not the exact accent necessarily, but pronunciation. Shadowing can do magic when it comes to pronunciation. Well, this one is not a question. It's actually a bit of nagging. Like, I hate English grammar, what to do? Don't look at grammar like a set of hard rules. Look at it as a recipe. If you learn some good recipes, you'll always have some yummy food. So what to do about it? Don't try to learn the rules of grammar through books. Try to pick up those rules from everyday conversations Try to pick those up naturally. Well, this one is related to exams, but which is easier, IELTS or PTE? The answer is neither. IELTS is not easy, PTE is not easy. They are equally challenging, equally difficult, equally demanding. And definitely you need to prepare well. Well, this question gave me a bit of smile. I'm 37 years old. Is it too late for me to learn a new language? I'd say no, it's never too late. Scientifically speaking, there is a critical period where you can pick up the language more naturally, especially in terms of pronunciation and naturalness of your language use, but it's never too late. Keep your mind open about this new experience of learning a language and don't forget, you need to practice. What about you, my friends? Do you have any questions? You can ask your questions in the comments below. Like always, don't forget to like the video. And if you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon in the next video.